my music people. Do you like old vinyl records? Do you like music that maybe is a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll? Then here's the show for you. Welcome everybody to Dustin Vinyl with your hosts Dustin Chapin and Anthony Casper. I love the Benny Hill intro. I can't believe it did Benny Hill. Yeah, uh, J- Jay, so silly. He said last week, he's like, I'll put Benny Hill on. And I was like, I do it. And he did it. That's what I like about Jay. Man, he, man of his word. Challenge him. He'll do it. Yeah, he'll do it. Um, yeah, that was fun. I love Benny Hill as a kid. I remember, uh, let me get my thing straight. See my whole face. Uh, I love Benny Hill. I love the music. It was, uh, it was the only thing that was kind of like, you know, R rated on regular TV because PBS was like, it was Monty yeah. Python and uh, Benny Hill. And it was just, you know, just like you'd see it, you'd see a boob, you know, yeah. you'd, you'd see stuff. <laughs> That's what I remember the most because I was a little kid and I was like, this is on PBS. Yeah. yeah PBS got away with stuff, man, under the guise of art, I think. But uh, I, I loved it. And there was nothing better than him running with that music, chasing that old dude. Oh my gosh. That was- <laughs> <laughs> always running it was always like running. it was just hypnotic how amazing that song was with the with the way that they ran and so i don't know it's just so funny <laughs> but i'm a big fan of benny hill uh, <laughs> big so yeah uh this is great man uh you know i'm a little high right now not on drugs but on cleaning products i had somebody clean my house for the first time oh i had a cleaning service and i don't you know i'm no role like that but the place starts to get gross you're like all right this is a new place i'm not going i'm not gonna you know because in astoria you know it's like that place just got wrecked so it's like we can't live like that you know so <laughs> part of the new year is i feel like if you could you know we'll come back from the holidays we'll have a new you know fresh you know clean apartment then we can focus on the goals and all that bull you know oh but, vision yeah. boards and stuff you know, we're kind of about that life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I did that. I had theaters on my vision board. And boom, who's playing theaters? Come on now. All right. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to make a vision board tonight. <laughs> Got to get a vision board. Got to go there. So um, it was funny, though, because it was like, you know, I don't know if you've ever got uh, a cleaning service, but, um, you know, I just went on online. So first I, I went the cheap route. You know, I went like Groupon or whatever. And then I... And I was like, then I just got the person off the group on. Then I was like, I'll just do this cozy maids or something. And then it's like, and then you don't. And then afterwards, you're like, oh, man, this is like, who knows if this is real? Like, I just invited somebody to my house <laughs> under the guise of cleaning, but they could totally murder me. And then and so I'm, t- I'm texting the guy. And then it's like, and then the guy's waiting for me out front. It's a guy, which makes me a little, you know, I'm a little old, old school whatever and i was just you know i I wasn't ready for that and uh and then he's like i see this guy and it's like who's this crackhead and then it's like oh that's my cleaner oh man (laughs) he looked like he looked a little rough well he looked rough yeah it looked like he'd lived a life (laughs) so um you know he's tattooed up and so it was cool so am i whatever i'm not judging but uh but he he had flip-flops and like his vacuum was all dirty and stuff and i was like oh man and then i I, you know it's so i was like i gotta go with it you know then he might kill me if i tell him not (laughs) yeah he knows where you live already (laughs) yeah he's already got my stuff and so i let him in and then it's like and i got all this stuff in my car so i'm like i can't just leave this guy i don't you know but then it's like but that's part of the thing you leave them they clean you and so but then i took my i had like a 900 bucks in my drawer and i'd like put that in my pocket and then i like walk yes out. definitely do that <laughs> i uh you had an experience like that right i had yeah i was i was uh i wasn't home for a weekend and i had i had a, a roommate and the roommate for the first time ever uh had a cleaner come Mm. but didn't tell me until after. Mm. So he was like, Oh, by the way, I had somebody come and clean over the weekend and uh, we were on the phone. I wasn't even home yet. And I was like, uh, well I had uh, $900 in cash on top of my dresser in my oh. room. So can you go check and see if it was there? And he was like, he's like, all right, I'm looking now. And then he goes, and he's like, uh, was it on top of the drawer or inside one? Of the Dude, drawers? Your roommate <laughs> stole that money. You told me this story. And that's why I was sketched out about yeah. the uh, maid service. I guarantee you my life on the it. Roommate. Your roommate stole the money and blamed it on this poor maid service that you probably freaked out on. Well, they did give me the money back. Did they? Yeah, but <laughs> just because they, they broker out these maids and stuff. These cleaning yeah. people, but oh, I don't know what happened. I wasn't. I home. bet it was a roommate. Yeah, I bet it was. 
Do I know well, that was the rent money? That was I had my rent, huh? Was it? Do I know that was it a comic or no? No, no, oh, okay. it was like a friend of a friend. So okay, um, yeah, we didn't friend know of each a friend well. always rips you off. Yes, they don't, they don't have that connection to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's one step <laughs> they, removed they, from. Yeah, they have from, it with the friend. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, so I let the guy in. You know, he's 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 this guy. He's been beat up a little bit. Got maybe maybe some of his teeth. And I'm like, all right, dude. And then he's got a van shirt on, which, you know, I always like that. I was like, ah, he's like a skater, dude, whatever. I'm into that. And so he comes in and he's like, starts cleaning. And he's, you know, cleaning, whatever. And then I'm like, I don't know, should I have music on? And so it was like such a thing that I was like, you know, I got vinyl. And then I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> Dustin's vinyl every day, Wednesday at four. And so uh, <laughs> you're just like trying to make, I was like, make bragging, him cool. like yeah, yeah, I got my vinyl. Yeah, yeah I'm cool. Yeah, it means, just means I'm old. <laughs> and I was just like, uh, it was like, and then I put on like jazz, and then I was just like, ah, this guy doesn't want to clean to jazz. And then I was just like, hey, what kind of music like? And then he said like three bands. I had no idea what he's talking about. But <laughs> uh, he looks hardcore, so I was like, the Cramps, you know? I was like trying to list all my hard stuff, and I was like, Motorhead. He's like, yeah, I, oh, that Motorhead. I got Motorhead. <laughs> so I put the Motorhead on, and then like he's cleaning the Motorhead. It was just really funny. It was such a funny experience of me and the person. Yeah. That's great. But, it's like uh, you keep playing music. You're like, you offer to make him lunch. I did. I would. I asked him what seltzer. No, I kept, but I kept trying to, you know, I was doing a playlist, you know, I was like, well, yeah. I'll, I'll go for Motorhead. It's like, and then, I, you know, it's just like Velvet Underground. Who? Everybody loves Velvet, uh, Velvet Underground. So I was like, I'll yeah. do that. You know, it was just funny. I was like <laughs> DJing for this club <laughs> based off of his appearance. I was like, all right, he's kind of like a, a Panther tat. You know, it was just funny. <laughs> and so if I showed up, to clean your apartment, what what kind of playlist would you make for me? Uh, it would just be all female music for sure. Um, so, some Alanis, period music we Alanis call it. Morissette, <laughs> uh, Indigo Girls. Yes, all the like above. That. All yeah. the above. Yeah, and then maybe some Benny Hill. I would. I think I would. I would love to do cocaine and then clean to Benny Hill. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Oh, see how much better it is when Jeff's not looming at me while I'm starting. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> let me in. Why is Anthony there? All right. So <laughs> why do you make that call without me? All right. I love Jeff. We all love Jeff. We love uh, Jeff. Jeff is uh, at a concert, I believe. Hailstorm. I believe oh. he's at a fancy concert. So uh, that, I'm excited to hear the uh, report from the concert. Yeah. Uh, have you been to a concert lately, Anthony? I'm trying to think if I've been, um, I went to one outdoor thing. Uh, it was like a funk band. Okay. You don't but know I name. haven't been, to, I haven't been to like a, to, to like a real inside venue to see a band that I, that I love yeah. yet. Yeah, well, we finally got rescheduled to see the Strokes on January 25th. So we're very oh, excited nice. about that. So we're going to be seeing them, House of Blues. Very excited. Small venue, which I think will be fantastic. So we'll get COVID, but we'll have a great time. Yeah. All right. Which and is what is important. <laughs> the band will just sound better. <laughs> uh, random pulls. I had a hard time with this because I was running late. So I just grabbed um, a uh, just Christmas album since it's the season. Um, Johnny Cash uh, makes Christmas just sound a little more depressing than it needs to sound. But I uh, always love his voice singing anything. And this is a really cool uh, Christmas spirit. Uh, it has a Christmas spirit, which I, I don't know if he wrote any of these songs. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I think these are all, let's see. Spirit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He wrote the, he, that's the one he wrote. The, it, but a lot of the other ones are, are like Blue Christmas he didn't write. Uh, Here Was a Man, I think he wrote Christmas as I Knew It, Silent Night. He definitely wrote that. Little yeah, Drummer Boy. Was... I know he wrote that. <laughs> He's a Johnny Cash <laughs> Jingle originals. Bells. That's totally a, a Johnny Cash How many Cash people original. know that he wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. <laughs> You look like you're going to a funeral. Maybe I am. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Okay. Um, <laughs> who kept the sheep? I don't know. Who kept, who kept them, Anthony? We don't know who kept the it sheep. It was the uh, precursor to who let the dogs out. It was. Who kept the sheep? Who? <laughs> uh, wow, today is so fun. All right. Um, 
<laughs> is that is that how you tell me shut up this is not working <laughs> no it is fun that's oh, not oh. No, i would never i would no that's jeff i'd do that too um <laughs> you heard to me once and then you get you understood it was just my fault i was just once. it was just once just because you know i have a you know i'm a mad scientist a genius about the show all right and the ballad of the harp weaver nobody knows what that is no. but it's a good song uh good album any Johnny Cash, there's two of them. There's a Johnny Cash, blue, uh, kind of a different one. It's not called Blue Christmas. That's the Elvis one. But there's a Johnny Cash, just like three Christmas. There might be like five. I don't know. Find out Find out how many there are. Let <laughs> find out which Johnny Cash Christmas album is right for you. Exactly. <laughs> and then next, we got Bonanza Sings Ooh. Christmas. <laughs> Bonanza. Bonanza, the whole crew. We got Z- everybody. Zippity doo dah. Christmas that. on the Ponderosa. That's right. We got Don Blocker as Haas, which is hilarious. Look at that. That's hilarious. Haas, look at him <laughs> singing with a microphone. That's too funny. Lauren Green, who you might know, you nerds out there playing video games from Battlestar Galactica. Not the one with the hot chick, but the one from the, original the 70s. One. And then Michael Landon, the dude with the ears, who was, he- uh, what was that show he did? Heaven Can Wait or something. Heaven, the, Heaven the something. Dude with know. the ears. Yeah. <laughs> got big ears man that's why i had the long i had big ears when i was a kid i had to I had to grow hair over the ears and then i had my ears done these are plastic surgery son did you really yeah i had them done a bunch one time so here's i, just, I don't give a shit we're being vulnerable it's uh it's the internet nobody cares anymore um yeah i i got my ears done and they were just like in you know big like look at car door opening right when i was a kid and they just didn't go back they tried everything tried to tape them tried to glue them and nothing happened because they say it's kind of like a dog like if you you know pin them back they'll eventually stay back but they didn't and so i got him done by this plastic surgeon and then uh he just botched him up i looked at people kept calling me spock like it was horrible like they just they were all bad whatever and then my mom who managed a lot of doctor's offices Ended up uh, at this one uh, plastic surgery place and ended up dating and marrying the plastic surgeon that, that worked there. He ended up being my stepdad. Wow. Stepdad Ed, rest in peace. And he fixed the ears. So I really think my mom just dated this dude to get my ears fixed <laughs> <laughs> and married that's him. A good, so, that's a good mom right there. Married him so I could have decent ears. I don't look like <laughs> some freaking freak or whatever. So no anyway, idea. woo, good times, everybody. Best uh, years in the business. You know, that's what they say. <laughs> you know. Um, it's LA, you know, I might get some more stuff done. Not not face stuff. I just, I don't know. We might get those bangs. I might, I might end up getting that turkey hair. Who knows? Oh, yeah. I've been thinking about getting a penis reduction. That is the worst. Nobody <laughs>, laughs. Nobody, not even Adam. And Adam laughs at a lot of stuff. Adam's like a hearty guy. And he just stared at the camera. <laughs> just stared. In fact, stared. he frowned. He didn't. He just, yeah. He just stared. He scowled a little bit. Jay at stared at the screen. Like, we're trying to keep it clean. We're trying to get on Disney. Why are you saying jokes like that? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen your piece. It's pretty big. <laughs> All right, we're going to start the show, everybody. Uh, very uh, funny uh, co host here today. Adam Holtz, everybody. Give it up for him. Hey, guys. You, what's up? Did you get a penis reduction too, Adam? <laughs> Did you get one? Yeah. See, guys with big dicks don't say that, but Anthony's got a pretty decent one. So I'll let him get away with it. She uh, so was talking about Michael Landon before. It was yes. uh, Highway to Heaven. Highway to Heaven. That's it. Yep. I knew it was a heaven. It was a and, heaven. You know what? And uh, yeah, so he was Little House in the Prairie, Highway to Heaven, Bonanza, and supposedly a pretty big scumbag. Really? And, oh. and the, the, the crazy thing is he was America's dad, just like Cosby. Yeah. And there's. Yeah. There's, oh, all the, yeah, all the shows are yeah. wholesome about lessons and treating people good. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I guess, I guess that happens, man. Like the more yeah, wholesome uh, guys, you got to watch out. Yeah. They got something to hide, you know? Right. <laughs> Not always, but some guys do. It's when they're preachy, they do. You know what I mean? Like it's like clean comics or you know whatever. But Cosby was like preaching it, man. He was like going to you know colleges and telling people you know stuff about being African American. It was just like a weird thing. It was weird. It was yeah. like you know what I mean? Like he was going out of his way to kind of just judge people. And then it's like then you, that was a red flag. Like what? What are you doing, this dude? You're like a comedian. Like you don't need to do this. And then you know it just got weird. He never did it on stage, which would be ballsy. I would respect that if he like did a bit on kids need to pull up their pants, you know. And of course, he needed yeah. to pull up his. That was the end. Right. Hey, <laughs> hey. Do one more. 
<laughs> this is gonna be a silly show. So it's it was fun listening to you guys. Boy, y'all got me some weird music this week. And, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and uh, it was exciting though. You know, it's like I'm a you know I'm a huge fan of finding new music. I love it. I love it. You know, if, if it was just me and Jeff, it would just be like, okay, enough of Van Halen and Pat Benatar. You know, what I mean? so ACDC like, reissue. <laughs> well, that's me. I'm I'm the ACDC guy. He's the other. He's the other stuff. Don't don't mess with ACDC. I'll break your neck. I love but anyway. ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah but it's you know it was good stuff man it was like uh, it's interesting and um you know i'm curious as you know to hear your presentations and takes on it you know how you found the band and what they are to you and all that good stuff and you know do whatever you want we'll, we'll have fun with it and uh we'll start with uh anthony all right um well, I tried to learn one of the songs. That's a weird way to do it. I would have just done should, it. Should I do end. it after? <laughs> you want me to do it after? Asking, they, they, we're on the show, by the way. The, the yeah. show's rolling. Wait, when does this air? <laughs> this, it's airing now. It's always air. Can we cut this part out? It's always air. <laughs> People that pay five dollars to see this when it's not on air. So let's let's give them a quality show. <laughs> five dollars. You're gonna bring that down about two. Well, okay. All so right. here's so so cheek face. Is the band uh, the album uh, that I that I picked is called Emphatically No, um, and so Cheekface is a kind of indie rock band from L.A. They have a kind of uh, talk singy kind of style. A lot of the verses are a sort of stream of consciousness, uh, almost. Uh, spoken word verse and uh, then they'll have a, a hook sometimes for the chorus uh, and it's it's uh, they talk about politics or food or uh, mental health things like that it's sort of all over the place um, the music sounds uh, along the lines of maybe pavement and uh, uh, Minutemen is an influence uh, Velvet Underground um, stuff like that um, and so they're not they're not a huge band. They're pretty pretty underground. So there's not a, a ton of uh, information that you can find other than a couple of half hearted interviews and stuff. They've been a band for, since like 2017, and this is their second full length album uh, that that came out in in January of this year. Um, and and a lot of the songs fit with the kind of mood of pandemic life, but I was uh, reading stuff that all of this stuff was written and recorded like right up until the pandemic hit. So, uh, it's, uh, they, they were upset about these sorts of things, you, you know, leading up to the pandemic, this kind of like singing about, you know, feeling isolated and, uh, Go government, uh, you know, issues with the government and things like that. So, but it's interesting because it really is a nice, uh, um, it's, it's, it feels very much like an album of this time, you know, with, with life being what it is right now. So, um, but I, I like this album a lot because it's, uh, they're not a comedy band, but there's moments on the album where you can, you can hear that they could have been, you know, there's a lot of humor on the album and it's, 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 um, the kind of the kind of stuff that I'm trying to do with with the, the music that I uh, that I make, and I, I don't I don't know a lot of bands that are are doing it the way you know in, in this same way. So um, so I I really connected with this. This is actually a band that my uh, my girlfriend found uh, and showed to me. Just like Apple Music was like, you probably like this, and she was like, yeah, oh, you gotta check this out. Um, so I don't know how most people find out about them because they're they don't get a whole lot of press or you know a lot, a lot of radio play. So anyway, that's that's my uh, that's my presentation. What were some <laughs> of the tracks you like? Uh, the, for the opening track I think is my favorite one. It's, uh, it's "Listen to Your Heart." No, uh, it's you know just a list of things that you should do, but you don't want to. You know, pay your parking ticket. No, uh, listen to your heart. No. So, you know, it's, uh, that's sort of the, the gist of it. Any others? Well, the one that I learned is called, yeah. uh, no connection. Let me hear it. That's a great yeah. one. Here, let's, 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 let's play some great a little lines bit. in that. 
Yeah, there, there's some good lines in a lot of them. Um, here we go. Try to, try to do this. Life is long. Oh, we have CBS receipt. <laughs> Even when you're famous, I just spell your name. If you're not disappointed yet, just give me some time. I'm feeling fine, but not better than fine. There's one piece of advice that I'd want to pass along. It's you should dress for the dog you want. For the dog you want. I got blood under my fingernails from scratching my head. We've got a lot of croutons, so we better make the salad. My new therapy is just thinking about my friends. Maybe that's what it feels like to miss someone. I've got memories that aren't that good. I've got dreams and dreams are not that good. I'm an out too loudly, I don't know what's going wrong I tried turning it off and then turning it back on Do I look better when I'm suffering? There's no connection I'm announcing loudly that we were never friends No shirt, no shoes, no justice, I did not mean to offend Everything might be okay, there's no connection there's no connection. Oh, that was great, dude. Oh, thanks. I had no idea you were going to actually do the song. I thought you were just going <laughs> to do some riffs. That's why I was fucking around in the beginning. I was like, oh, hey. yeah. I didn't know you were doing the song, <laughs> the entire song. Like you cover, you did a cover of the song. That was great. Wow. Yeah. It's a, you know, I figure most people yeah. haven't heard them. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Be nice now, to hear an example now, of what they do. Now, if they want to make some money, since they're not, you know, gigging like everybody else, they could just sue Comedy Hub. Yeah, they. <laughs> oh, I was thinking they could hire me to Twitch. go play their songs. <laughs> Twitch. Yeah. They could, yeah. Twitch. You could just sue Twitch. Sue um, Twitch. Yeah, they're good, man. Um, I'll start. I'll lead in. Um, I enjoyed them a lot. Um, at first, I needed to get into it, and for it really reminded me of you a lot. Like it's very narcissistic. <laughs> um, <laughs> like the band. Because uh, I just, you know, I saw Anthony written all over it. So I was like, okay, this got to, I go, did he write some of these? Is he, is that him? Like there were a couple of times where I felt you in these songs. But yeah, but I think it's cool. You know, it's cool that you found a band that's kind of, you know, it's great when you find somebody that's doing something similar to what you're doing, but different yeah. or whatever. So yeah, it's like an inspiration, you know, whatever. It's cool. I think you yeah. should definitely reach out to these guys. Let them know what you're up yeah. to. I, yeah. You know, I've, I tried, I, I've tried to, talk to him on facebook a little i mean not facebook yeah. on twitter a little bit yeah. but they you know they, they didn't follow me back yeah, uh, you know, they, they respond though they they, they, they uh, respond but they didn't follow you back yeah right? they didn't follow me back okay. though. Eh, but um maybe after this show because everybody watches the show yeah we'll see <laughs> we'll see <laughs> what happens will follow you back. <laughs> um yeah i normally it was really funny like um this is great because it's like i want you guys to do more of this like bringing in bands that people don't know about because you know, it was so cool to be listening to a band that I have more Instagram followers than. Like, it was, it was really... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm crushing more than this band. You know, it was so funny. Um, uh, th but they're great. They're really good. They had good songs. They reminded me, actually, uh, Dead Milkman. Mm. Um, I got a big vibe. I got a Devo vibe, too. And, uh, I could see that. Definitely some Velvet Underground. And definitely... You know, and it was funny when you're just like when you're not ready for songs uh, to not rhyme. You're just like, is he going to rhyme here? I guess he's not. I guess he's just yeah. going to he's just going to talk through that. And so, you know, you and I have done some spoken word stuff and stuff. So it's it's interesting. And you do a lot of it in your act as well. But, yeah, it was cool. I, I, I grew to like it. Like it took me a second. I felt at first I felt like it wasn't you know, funky, soulful enough for me. But then mm -hmm. I got into kind of like, you know, the state of what's happening and the commentary. And then I started to dig it and, uh, you know, enjoyed it as kind of a, you know, kind of a new wave punk kind of, you know, stance on stuff. It was cool. I liked it. I thought it was definitely um, something I normally wouldn't listen to. And um, 
you know, I don't know if I'll ever listen to it again, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, enjoyed, I enjoyed that first run. I really did. Yeah, it was a really was, uh, strong start. <laughs> no, but they're cool, you know. But it's like, you know, you could tell that it's like the uh, the emphasis is on the message. You know, like once in a while they'll do a solo or something, but it wasn't like it's not their forte. And yes. which is fine. The Ramones could only play the Ramones. Like, like it is what it is. But it's like, you know, it's just, you know, it's like sometimes, you know, I'm a blues guy and so, you know, whatever. So yeah, I like yeah. a, I like a very complicated kind of musician or whatever. But so, but I have to take it for what is good. And what is good is kind of upbeat, kind of like, you know, really funny on the pulse commentary. And, uh, but I, those lines that I was saying, I thought they were funny. Life is as long as a CVS yep. receipt. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was great. That's a great line because that was the other day. It was like CVS tried to charge me for a bag. And I was like, well, who's charging you for them damn receipts? Like, <laughs> it's like, why, why are you charging me 10 cents for the bag? There's no need for that long ass receipt, you know? We You're thought the they could yeah. make paper bags out of those yeah. receipts instead. Yeah, they're ruining everything with those receipts. It's either that was really funny. That and is then, funny. And it's funny because you and I had a little thing today, actually. And so, and I always have it, and uh, but the misspelling of a name. And oh, yeah. um, and I thought that was funny. They had a line like that, like even when you're famous, mis people misspell your name. Which is so oh funny. yeah, yeah. I've had to call up newspapers and be like, "It's one F," you know. <laughs> like I remember writing Vulture. I'm like, "It's one F, okay?" The fuck? <laughs> you know, just freaking out. Like somebody big people are talking about me, and I'm like, "It's one F." <laughs> <laughs> so I've had a lot of those moments. Um, but uh, yeah, it was cool, man. I thought it was fun and and kind of you know new. It's new, you know, which I like. It just it, that shit, you know. It's like how much ACDC can you listen to? Yeah. So um, it's nice to listen to something new and different. And um, yeah, I think it's uh, you know, it's it's relevant and fun and uh, yeah, cool. I liked it, Adam. What'd you think? So uh, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed this album. I think this is one I'll put in uh into uh, my rotation and. Oh, wow. um, so you will us to do it again. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I actually connected with it pretty fast and, um, right. I've gone through it a few, a few times so far, but, um, I mean the, uh, the CVS line, one of my favorites on there, the life is long, I guess, uh, CVS proceed on a wedding guest, which I think is their standout song on this. Um, when I first started listening to us, I, I had a, I, I they sounded a bit like, parquet courts a little bit they sound yes. a little bit like courtney barnett and they actually have um if you look at their album cover with the uh lawn chair it's it's very similar to courtney barnett's um sometimes i sit and think and sometimes i sit which is just a painting of a an empty chair on there <laughs> oh but um, oh, you know what, what i did what i forgot to mention about their artwork is that the bass player uh mandy she does all the the art looks pretty their, cool even their artwork looks like yours anthony <laughs> 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 but uh yeah i mean this is uh, uh this i thought it was I, I thought it was it was uh it was breezy it was it was it was breezy fun. It's a fun yeah, yeah, breezy, word. that's yeah. a good word for it yeah breezy i like that yeah like uh on the beach you know kind of yeah. upbeat in the car yeah it's a beat yeah i liked it that was fun yeah it? all right i have it it's yeah it's it's the closest thing i've heard to uh you know a band that's doing this the kind of thing that i'm trying to do so I, i'm glad that there are ar artists that are doing this kind of stuff because uh i you know now i know there's a, at least some some sort of market for it yeah you just need a band yeah. anthony yeah i just need, just need a band. hey but uh, i played all the parts to, you know and i'm <laughs> Just, yeah, you know, but people are dry, you know, there's something about a band though, you know? Yeah. People like to see a band. They want to see what the drummer looks like with the shirt off, you know? Cap face. Cap face. I like it. I'm into it. We could, I could learn how to play something. Yeah. Washboard, chainsaw. I could play the chainsaw. Oh, yeah. I'm looking for a chainsaw player, actually. <laughs> Lead chainsaw or rhythm? I don't know. There was a real guy, a metal guy back in the day that played a chainsaw. I don't really? know. Really? Yeah, it was like it's like a band, and he ended up producing this thing I did. It was I tell you, I don't know I don't know what it's, but there's a guy he's a chainsaw metal guy, and he played chainsaw. I don't know if you've I guess nobody's heard of him, but I'll find out who he is. Sound uh, off in the chat if you've heard of the nobody's heard chainsaw nobody metal. heard of cheek face by the way. So nobody, <laughs> definitely nobody I put that in there. Nobody, so nobody no, knew at all. No, nobody wow. knows. These kids don't care. They don't care about music. They just they just care about their you know 
Call of Duty 53 or whatever's happening over mm. the Twitch line. I'm trying to get them mad so they respond, but they won't. I don't think anybody's watching us. I think it's just, I don't think Jay's, I think Jay's cat is watching us. That's what I think it's. <laughs> but um, yeah, so they're, they're a cool band. <laughs> and uh, like, I didn't want to like them because I think the show's better when somebody doesn't like the band. Yeah. I've noticed the show seems a little better. So I'll, so I'll just do an impression of Jeff. Jeff, I don't yeah. know if I like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, you know, but I can't roller skate to this. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, forgot he wasn't, <laughs> I forgot he wasn't going to be here. I, I did not think that he would like this yeah. album. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I don't think it's for me, but yeah. I enjoyed it. And I see what it is. It's not, you know, something that I'm crazy about, but... Now, Adam's choice, don't be a jealous sibling. I but bought I, the album. Ooh, okay. <laughs> but can I, that's pretty cool. But can I just point out that yes. y, you said um, that it's not for you, and it reminds you a lot of what I do. <laughs> well, you, you're not for me as, I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with our, our friendship. No, I know. but the, I think you're funny on stage. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I don't know. Are we gonna do this on the air? <laughs> yeah, let's do. It. Let's do it. I have you on every single show I do. Do you think if I didn't like what you do, I wouldn't have you? My God, you're on my stand-up show. You're on this show. Like how many shows? I can think. I had you on my thing, and the Jay I'm saw on, you, and then he gave I'm you your own your show. Album. Yeah, Where, that's true. Get out of that's here, true. dude. Get I'm out of here. On both albums. Get out of here. You're on every <laughs> album. Everything I do, you're a piece of. <laughs> See how he is? See how he is, Adam? This is what I got to deal with. <laughs> this is Somebody once told us uh, that our fr a girl was being said, their, their friendship is like unnatural. And we were like, what? What does that mean? I still don't know what she was getting at. <laughs> unnatural. unnatural. Like, I, I was like, are we gay? Like, I, yeah. I was like, it was hilarious that she said that. Unnatural. We still make fun of it. It's like <laughs> unnatural yeah. friendship. Unnatural. <laughs> All right, uh, Adam, hit me. All right, so we're going to go with an album that's the complete opposite of Cheek Face. And this is the uh, second album of the uh, by the uh, UK band Black Midi. It's their album Cavalcade. Uh, I first heard of this band on Sirius XM uh, on uh, XMU. They were playing John 50, which is just that's the opening track of this album. And it is just such a frantic, chaotic song with um, their uh, their guitarist lead singer Jordy Greep has this uh, very distinct distinct uh, vocals to it. It's, he's almost like a demented carnival bark. There's starts, there's stops, there's uh, the whole song's about a cult leader. It's just such a unique and interesting uh, song and I I was just fascinated by it. So I went and checked out the album. The whole album is kind of like a avant-garde prog rock jazz fusion um, there's some, I guess, math rock and noise rock in there too. It's uh, the the band they're compared to the most is King Crimson, which is a band that I don't really know much about. But I uh, I checked out some of their stuff. It does sound, you know, kind of similar. But but uh, it's really like this is a this is a challenging, adventurous, unique. Uh, it's kind of a very dark and and brooding, uh, uncompromising album. It's an album that that really demands multiple listens to really kind of pull, you know, uh, to, to pull a lot of what's going on in it. And the whole album is just a dark procession. You have these, it's all about these uh, figures that are failing, whether they're, whether it's, um, uh, you know, the cult leader from John 50, it starts the album or it's um, dethroned later on, which is a, a leader who is, uh, um, basically thrown from power you know there's marlena dietrich the second song on the album which is about the 30s cabaret singer and there's a there's like a theatrical element to it there's a lot of uh jordy is crooning throughout this this the uh song it's probably the most serene song but it's also kind of a really strange song for for today and then uh i think my favorite song on this album is slow which would have been perfect for uh, our goth month because that song has a psychedelic goth vibe to it. It's um, it's a song about kind of existential despair. It fits with the times. I think a lot of this album actually fits with 2021. And um, there's also 
uh, Diamond Stuff, which was right after it, which is probably one of the most beautiful songs they have on it, where it's just a single string to start it. It's kind of a, uh, uh, it's a single string fo- uh, kind of followed by this ambient noise. It reminds me a lot of Pink Floyd Time, the opening for it, but a little bit more stripped oh. down. And um, it's, I mean, it's a pretty dark song. It's about a person kind of stuck in a diamond mine, just decaying. Mm. But it sounds, wow. the whole song sounds, it has this echo to it, which just makes you think that, I mean, it makes you feel like you're inside this mine. Um, there's a, uh, ascending forth the, the the final song on the album nine minutes the longest song and it's about an artist selling out and you know this artist who's critically loved and acclaimed has writer's block decides to um you know create create something he thinks the masses would like and they hate it um but you know each each listen there's there's more and more i pick up from it it's kind of there's a there's a maelstrom throughout the album. It's like a frenzy of sound going through. And I thought it was one of, I mean, I picked it because I thought it was one of the most unique albums I've heard this year. Yeah, that was amazing. You guys are yeah. so, you guys did a great job. You really did. Anthony learned a song. You had all this depth <laughs> in what you were saying. Like, it was like, this is great. This show's so much better today. Anyway, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Yikes. Um, yeah, man. You know, here's the, here's the honest thing. I, I actually bought the album because I, di- I didn't listen to it first. So it wasn't like I ran out like a, 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 a door or anything. <laughs> It's so cool, I just said, you know, cool it art. felt like it was something that would work. Actually, I tried Cheek Face, but I mean, you could even get them on Bandcamp. I was like, <gasps> well, I couldn't that, find them anywhere. That's the thing. I, I don't know if we've talked about it on the show, but we we definitely have talked privately about how the new Adele album, she she jumped oh, the line to get her records made. Oh, and okay. it directly affected bands like Cheek Face uh, because yeah. they did a first pressing. You know, they're doing shorter run pressings because they're a smaller band. We could go so to they, disc disc logs or whatever in jersey or whatever disc log what oh. is it? Disc logs. <laughs> yeah well yeah. but i it, it their their second pressing after the first one sold out was delayed by like a couple of months because well, of people adele. love adele anthony yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> so. she's she's now she's skinny like we, we can't stop loving her <laughs> we just can't <laughs> she should um, wait her turn yeah yeah uh, this is a cool album. Uh, I kind of got it late last night, so I couldn't blast it really. Um, so this is the kind of album you don't really need to blast it because it's kind of has this haunting feel to it. Yeah. Um, the albums, you know, I let, you know, I just like, and I love the idea that I didn't go to fucking Spotify. I didn't go to Apple Music. I just bought the record, and yeah. then that was the first time I listened to it. It felt so 1994. Right. Yeah, it was that amazing. is cool. It was amazing. It was like somebody told me that I just bought it and I hadn't heard it, and then I played it. It was so cool. It was such a throwback moment. And I'm wearing parachute pants today too. And uh, <laughs> this is. It's cool, you know. I don't understand the artwork, which I love. I don't understand this album at all, but I like it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the artwork is uh, uh, it's kind cool. of it's Bad kind ass. of like uh, Hieronymus Bosch meets like a digital version meets a uh, uh, Google Deep Dream, which is this weird program that really kind of distorts and creates these psychedelic imagery. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's I'm I'm feeling this whole thing, and it just goes to show you that you know England just does it better than us. They really oh, yeah. do musically, you know, film, acting, plays, whatever. Man, they just crush us in the arts, and uh, you know, we uh, we crush them in American football because they don't play. That's why we crush them. But I, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's because they they value more experimental music yeah, over there, especially with yeah. rock. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, everything is experimental, you know. Like Monty yeah. Python was experimental yeah. comedy. Yeah. You know, they they're always kind of a uh, uh, more cutting edge than we are. And they don't have the inhibitions. Like they're just like they're free, and you know, it's like there's they don't care if they make fun of Jesus or the Queen or whatever. You know, they they go after people. You know, and they in a funny way. And there's there's you know things, but um, but this particularly. It, uh, you know, it was because I'm a depressed dude, you know what I mean? So this is, I hide behind this silliness. And so this kind of music is like, you know, kind of gets to me. It's haunting. It, it's kind of my, I'm a big Bauhaus kid, you know, that kind of music. Um, I like music that doesn't make sense. Like it just, like they, they just switch. It has a little bit of a Roxy music thing. And then they just switch yeah. into just like freaking, I don't know what it is, man. They're just like bland, you know, what I have no idea. Well, I'm still trying to understand the instruments and stuff. They have well, there's there's a, some electric stuff as well, right? 
Yeah, there's a there's a, the song Hogwash and Balderdash, which actually means nonsense <laughs> and nonsense. It starts with the cowbells, and then yeah. as it progresses, it it almost sounds like a Looney Tunes, Warner Brothers yeah. kind of like cartoon. Yeah. Yeah, it's got it's just got all that kind of weirdness to it that I that I enjoyed. It's got a primus feel, you know. It's like where it just, you know, kind of just does whatever the hell it wants and mixed genres and stuff and a Zappa thing and you know, just all kinds of crazy yeah. stuff happening. And so yeah, I really liked it. And um just like Anthony's band, I liked that too because it felt fresh. I felt this felt fresh, yet it also felt it reminded me of my kind of goth days and like that music that I was into and stuff. And so but with a but with like a twist, you know, they just did some stuff, you know, musically that I've never really heard before. And so um kind of glad I have it on vinyl because I'm gonna need to listen to this a lot to really yeah. appreciate it. Cause it's just kind of one of those albums that you'll miss kind of the nuances of of a song because you know, it's like because there's a lot going on. And uh I don't know what what the fuck is math rock? I don't know, but I like it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I hate math, but I like rock. So I guess I'm into it. You know, like, well, explain that to me. What is math rock? What is so that? I, I've never even heard that. I was hearing that term for years and I finally decided, I'm like, you know what, for this, for this album, I'm going to look it up and see what it is. Uh, it's basically, uh, you know, music that is going to is kind of constantly change, like change fast stuff that has faster tempos, changes in time signatures, uh, songs that are starting and stopping. So from what I read, I think they said King Crimson and Rush are kind of the the originators of it. OK. And uh, Slint. Slint also. Oh, okay. Slint. Interesting. Yeah. Slint is <laughs> Slint because Slint is math rock without being prog rock. Mm. So some math rock is kind of more like art rock, and then some of it sounds more like Rush and Yes and all that kind of stuff. But like Slint doesn't. They Slint sounds more like Fugazi than yeah than uh, than Rush. Right, and that's the same with uh, the Dismemberment Plan because they're they're thrown into the math rock category too. But they sound more like Fugazi also. Interesting. Um, what is so that that's gonna, the distinction. That's what makes going, it not. I want to. I want to look something up. Um, what was? You'll know this, Adam, and you might too, Anthony. Um, so music's recorded on an HG thirty forty, or what is it? What is the uh, HGZ? You know what that is? Uh, HGZ. Um, the, um, what is it? <sighs> music hertz. Hertz. Yeah, it's the hertz, right? Yeah. Um, and it's like um, it's recorded it now, like. 340 or something it used to be 320 do you have any idea what i'm talking about um that sounds more like a bit rate thing okay what you're saying the hertz i think is like cd quality i think is 41 uh 41 something like then, some albums are, are recorded in this slower speed and it it it, it it's almost like it and it's oh oh for the are you talking about for the for the vinyl or just recorded just in the studio in at a different studio? Know, I shouldn't have opened this up without knowing all the information. <laughs> I know that <laughs> some, some, some albums are like done, uh, the, the records are made like half speed to enhance the quality. I saw, I, don't a think meme, they're recorded like that. I saw a meme that said the Rockefellers like stepped in and changed the speed of this thing. And so now oh. music's recorded at this, at this speed or whatever. I don't know if it's the speed, but whatever it is. I sound like an idiot, but anyway, they changed it and it used to sound the other way. And then people were oh. saying how much better it sounds like you can go on YouTube. Once I figure out what the hell I'm talking about, you can go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. You can, you can listen to like uh riders in the storm, the door song on this speed or whatever. And, uh, God, I, don't, I look, I just had it. I was just looking at it. I hate that when you're just like, I'm going to look it up. Uh, uh, they, uh, I got a chat that said some people just make up terms for elite autophiles, uh, <laughs> audio files. Yeah, yeah, it makes us, you know, I get, I'm into it. If people can make music sound fancier, you know, yeah. that's cool. It's like when no. the records are like 180 gram uh, yeah. and everything is a double album because <laughs> they're trying to enhance the quality. It does matter. It does. Um, since this is a vinyl show, um, spend some money, you know, do your research. And, you know, I remember my first vinyl, I was like, whatever I got at the Salvation Army. And it was like, you know, just like the, the kind that you buy, like a Sanyo or something. And it was oh, like yeah. everything was connected with the cassette 
players. And then that thing broke. And then when I got another one, I got the Panasonic. It was, and I was still into vinyl, but I was playing on this piece of shit, you know, like the thing. And I finally invested in some money on speakers in a, in a turntable. And it's just, and some albums used to skip on the other one and they don't skip on this one. You know, oh, yeah. it's like because the you know the weight is perfect and stuff so i think you should spend money on music it's exciting what else are you gonna do that's like people yeah. spend money on something well yeah you especially know? now everybody's yeah. been home for so long you it's don't like have a you, turntable you, you find your thing you know what i mean yeah. I, all these twitch they're doing the, they spend the money on video games all that shit it's like people you know it's so i'm all about people making um music fancier you can't make comedy fancier really it's uh you know it's just we're just always going to be just looked down on that's why they took us off spotify <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't even see us as artists they're like we don't need comedians <laughs> you uh did you see uh they uh so it was, i guess it was taylor swift's uh one of the re-recorded albums she just released they uh they recorded the album at 45 rpm and everybody was pl- everybody ran out bought this vinyl they were playing it at 33 and a third so everybody just started complaining <laughs> saying they're like they're like who's this man singing taylor swift <laughs> ah, that's hilarious idiots. idiots that's so funny <laughs> i like taylor i kind of like taylor smith i, I you, you know, know i i, I didn't been, used to but i'm yeah. okay with her yeah i'm okay with her man she's i like, haven't listened to much of her stuff but i like what she's doing yeah it's um you know she um well she inducted um oh god this is where you need jeff um <laughs> Who's a person? Carol King. She inducted oh, yeah. Carol King into the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, yeah, she was gracious and cool, and I don't know. And she writes her music, which you know, yeah. it's like any you Plays know his instruments. Yeah, she's talented. I mean, it may not be for us. I mean, I'd feel like a weirdo at a at a you know Taylor Swift concert. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure somebody be like, "You're gonna have to leave. Uh, you're a little <laughs> too into what's happening right now." But I think she's good. yeah. So but I respect week. her as an artist, you know. I, like I wouldn't go that doing. far, but I think she's. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just you, you guys tricking me to. You know, I'm a huge fan. I got everything. She's, I got Next two copies week, you got of her t-shirt. Album. That would actually be funny. You would look great in a Taylor Swift T-shirt. That would be funny because you could pull it off in like a kind of a that yeah. ironic thing you guys do. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is a cool album, man. And it's like it right because it, it has a lot of my music that I like, which like Love and Rockets and Bauhaus. Mm-hmm. and uh Susie banshees all that stuff it has that element but then it also has kind of just weird jazz kind of experimental stuff and so it's really a nice mix of everything and then it's got like you said beautiful like that song like there's a moment you're like what is happening right now like there's like a beautiful ballad and stuff so yeah this is a cool album man and it's and i love anthony's too i love you guys equally um <laughs> so but I, <laughs> it's just cheek face i mean it's not even you can't even get that on you know digital you, I think. Right. Yeah. you can't even get that on myspace <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah you guys really need to tweet anthony back because he has a better presence than you guys so stop being cooler than anthony all right except yeah, i had a viral request. tweet this week yeah yeah of course you did so but they didn't so they need to be nicer to you they I, should I'll, be yeah, I'll find these guys. I'll tell them what's up. So let me tell They're you in LA. My yeah. friends do what you're doing. Oh, by the way, he did it like 10 years ago. So anyway. But <laughs> I yeah. Do it for, yeah. And I play I can play their songs all at the same time. Yeah. He learned your song in like 40 minutes. So <laughs> calm it down, guys. It takes three people to make their album. That's right. I mean, CVS receipt, good line, but be nice to that's, Anthony. That's pretty good. That's a good line. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was our show, guys. Uh, thank you so much for uh I don't feel anybody listened, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was more fun. It was for us. Sometimes you got to do a show for us. And so yeah. I guess we'll be back next week. I, I don't think that's Christmas. So I got I can't do Christmas, but as long as it's not Christmas Eve, I could, I could pull it I off. I don't think it is. Uh, I th- it Adam, is uh, the 22nd next week. So we're okay, good. I can do it. We'll do it. We'll do a special Christmas episode. We'll, we'll figure out something. We'll make it fun, but thank you guys for listening um, and check us out on all the platforms. And uh, I'm still going to get that Patreon page up. All right. I yeah. love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. See you later. Yay.